Hiya, peeps. This is Eve again. And uh, a few days ago, I promised I would give my backstory as to how I came to live in a converted horse trailer. And um, this is a pretty painful story because, as I mentioned in a previous video, I didn't actually choose to live tiny. It chose me. Now, don't get me wrong, I had been fascinated with tiny homes and tiny spaces many years previous to actually, <clears throat> excuse me, living tiny. However, you know, I was happily married to a childhood sweetheart named Bobby Lee Newsom. And we'd gone to school together and had been very started out as close friends when we were in our teens, early teens, 14 and 15 to be exact, when we were super tight and just almost, well, we had crushes on one another and both of us were so extremely shy. It was crazy, miraculous that we even got together at all because we were both that backwards and that shy. He was the shyest guy I had ever met in my life, bar none. But I could tell when I first started hanging around him and talking to him because I thought he was uber cute. I mean, and he was. Flawless skin, huge blue eyes, big beaming smile, always smiling, always smiling. There wasn't a time ever that I looked at this man that he wasn't he didn't have this big smile for me, but he'd also blush a lot, and that really wasn't that odd to me because I probably was always blushing a lot, too. We were both so extremely shy, but at any rate, <clears throat> things happened as they do in life, and we were teenagers, and there was the Vietnam War, and Bobby Lee was number three for the draft. And he was, he was going to be drafted into the Army. <clears throat> but he didn't want to be drafted into the Army. He wanted to be a Marine. So he decided, hey, instead of being drafting into the Army, I'm just going to enlist and be a Marine because I want to be a Marine. And there is something very special about Marines. They are the chosen and the proud and the few because it takes a very, uh, I, I honor all sort of servicemen. So rather than, you know, give you my opinions on any particular branch of the service, I love all of the branches of service. My father served in the army and most of my ancestors from back Civil War forward <clears throat> have all served in every single war. So I honor all servicemen and I am so grateful for everything they've done to help keep us a free country. And But there's just something about Marines and I'm not going to be apologetic about it, okay? They're just in those, those uniforms. But as a result of Bobby Lee enlisting in the Marines, kind of like I lost him. And he lost me for over 30-something years. And then a tremendous amount of events happened in our lives. And I'm, it would take hours to explain all of that. And I know you guys just don't have the time for all of this. So we're going to fast forward 35 years to where Bobby Lee and I got back together and got married in 2006 and moved from Grove City, Ohio. I was living in Grove City, Ohio. He was living in Kissimmee, Florida, and <clears throat> driving for a, a trucking company called Upstaging, hauling goods and lighting and clothing and stuff for major stars like Madonna, Jewel, uh, Three Doors Down, uh, too many to mention. I mean, he loved that job. It was a great job. It was a very hard job, but he loved it. So we got married, <clears throat> excuse me, moved to Florida. And from 2006 until 2017, I had the perfect 
idyllic marriage with the perfect man. And I know, I am, no, it was not typical. It's not typical. I've been around a long time and I've observed a lot of marriages, even good ones. No. Men like my husband just don't exist. Just don't exist. For 12 years, I was married to a man who still opened car doors for me. He never raised his voice. He was still always smiling. And when I got, would get sad, as we all often do, or have a bad day or an off day, which I never saw him have. <laughs> I mean, I think the man fell off of a cloud or something. I'm going to be honest. He was wired perfectly for someone as complicated as artsy-fartsy me, who, you know, even though I'm a kind person and consistent temperament-wise, and, you know, I can have my moments. And I've also went through some battles with cancer myself. And there were times when I didn't think I was going to make it. And Bobby Lee got me through those times. And he bandaged my wounds. And he nursed me. And I'm going to fight. Fight not to cry. Because I said I'm, I'm not going to. Because it just makes the story it's too distracting. I'm blubber all over the place. So bear with me, though, as I get through these moments. But Bobby Lee nursed me for through everything. He stood by me. Most men would have deserted, jumped, ship, and ran. Why not? Who wants to be with a what appears to be and could very well be a terminally ill wife who's got these horrendous cancer wounds from skin cancers? I mean, I've got scars over every part of my body, but there were some in the head and neck temple areas of my uh, body that had to be treated that, well, if I showed you the pictures, and I do have a blog, by the way, and I'll have a link to that blog where you can see a lot of the, a lot of the images of the cancerous wounds, but, um, that my husband treated and he got me through everything. And he still, after 12 years also, almost every evening, I'd lie down on the couch. He, he'd have dinner. I'd fix him dinner. And this is when he would come home from an ex extremely grueling day of work because he wasn't driving for upstaging after 2008. I won't get into all the details of why he left upstaging. Let's just put it this way. I got ill, and he left upstaging to care for me. And as a result, he ended up getting a maintenance position with a company, and he worked there um, I'd say from 2000, I think, I think he either started in 2008 or 2009, and then he worked until his death in 2018. He died on September 23rd, 2018, at like 1.15 in the morning. And uh, that was the most horrible day of my life. And my husband believed up until the very last breath he took that God was going to heal him. And so did I. But that didn't happen. But his daughter and his son and his beautiful grandchildren were all there with him and with me. And they got me through some stuff, those kids did. Thank you, Sam and Robbie. Thank you. But anyway, try not to digress too much. My husband had contracted in 2017. <clears throat> I noticed some huge lymph. Something, I, I don't know. I didn't know what they were. He was making something for me, an apothecary to be exact. A six, it was a little, it was six feet tall and like four feet wide. <clears throat> and he was out in the garage, um, you know, sawing or something. And as he was, you know, sawing with his arms, I could see on this particular part of his neck, something like, it looked like a baby's fist coming out of his neck. And I'm like, McGee, that was my nickname for him. I'm like, McGee, what's that? And then he put his, his hand immediately went up and he was hiding his neck, you know, like he didn't want me to see this, whatever this was. Long story short, I convinced him to go to the VA and then he was diagnosed with something called peripheralized T-cell lymphoma which later they called it uh, 
T cell pro lymph lymphoblastic lymphoma leukemia. There's so many different names for it, but the the initial diagnosis was peripheral T cell lymphoma. And when I did my research, it's basically in a nutshell, <clears throat> from the onset till the end, it's untreatable. So rare, so rare. It only constitutes depending upon which research. Uh, article you read anywhere from five to eight percent of the cancers diagnosed worldwide so they don't have a traditional treatment for it but long story short every traditional method to treat it using chemotherapy and radiation and stem cell nothing 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 prolongs its life in fact it shortens it so quality of life goes downhill immediately upon any kind of traditional treatment. And Bobby Lee did make some dietary changes and things of that nature as soon as he was diagnosed at the VA hospital. He he just looked at that doctor and says, I'm gonna he jumped up and he said, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this thing around. But the only thing he actually did in the beginning was he stopped eating meat. He still ate processed foods and, you know, just everything men like. I mean, come on, it's addiction. It's it's hard to make these changes. And I'd made all those changes, you know, after I was diagnosed with my cancer and I was afraid I was going to die, wasn't sure. You don't know. Um, you know, I, I had started, I became a vegetarian. Now, did I eat perfect? No. Do I still eat perfect? No. It's impossible. But I do my best. I do my absolute best. I wish I could eat 100% raw and juice constantly and fast, you know, three to five days a month and do colonics and, and you know, all of that stuff. I just, I just can't do it. And I won't go into some other reasons why it really doesn't matter as much to me anymore. But anyway, Bobby Lee probably had from everything that I had read about 17 months and by golly that's about all he lasted and the last four months of his life the quality of his life had just plummeted downhill and I won't go on to all that either it's just too painful I'm, I'm explaining this is just the backstory as to why I'm living in a converted horse trailer so that's what happened my husband contracted a rare incurable untreatable aggressive cancer and passed away on September 23rd of 2018 so that led me to when I was aware that my husband was going to pass away I immediately got online and started looking at alternative options for tiny you know housing options now, had my husband survived, we I had done some research looking at RVs and, uh, you know, tiny homes. He wasn't keen on the tiny home concept. Bobby Lee wanted to live in a traditional house, and to be honest with you, he didn't want to leave Florida. He loved Florida. I wanted to come back to Ohio because this is where my family is. But because I loved my husband so much and he was so good to me and my mother had already passed away, I was willing, I had resigned to live in Florida and stay where my husband was happy because my husband being happy made me happy. And, but when he got sick, I thought we need to go back to Ohio because I need to be around, I need to be around places and need to be able to get around more easily. And I have a little bit more family here than I actually do in Florida. All I have in Florida is one sister. So, and, but he started his, his, his health just started plummeting like really exponentially in the last six months and in the last four months and in the last two months, it was horrible. It's just horrible. So looking at all, getting online and looking at alternative, um, housing options, I ran across uh, what are called Gypsy Vardo wagons and I ended up purchasing one from uh, a couple of gals in Houston, Arkansas that make them and it was a magical little place but unfortunately it I just don't think in the long run it could have withstood Ohio weather but I brought it to Ohio and I had it parked in a friend's uh, backyard for pro you know probably six months or so and in the meantime uh, 
this particular horse trailer uh, created by uh, David Carlisle of Naples, Florida. It, it became available and on tinyhouselistings.com because I was, when I realized that the other uh, uh, dwelling just probably couldn't survive the rigors of the severe Ohio. It would have been fine in Florida probably, but the, <clears throat> except for hurricanes, which nothing can survive those anyway. It doesn't matter, but I mean, I would have just been, bye! <laughs> Me and my gypsy bardo wagon, you know, floating somewhere over the rainbow for sure. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Chances are. So, I ended up um, seeing this on Tiny House Listing, contacted David, man, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I, I knew when I saw this horse trailer, made of steel, like one of those, it's one of the heart, old heart, uh, the H-A-R-T, although it does have a heart on the outside. It's, it's, it's an old H-A-R-T, heart trailer, and I was, love anything vintage. And I'm like, that's it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. So I contacted David, and the rest is history. And yes, so I didn't choose to live this way. It did choose me. And even though I've always dreamed of living tiny, I did envision a, quite a bit larger space. We're talking 200 square feet. I live in 80 square feet, but you know, I love it. There's been some adjustments and I do have a storage unit because I'm an artist and there's just some things I couldn't let go of. And of course, I've got tons of photos and, you know, precious mementos and that's my memorial, Bobby Lee Memorial with his little ashes inside. I've got like six more of these too. Um, Things that are precious and they just won't fit in this tiny space. So, yeah, I have to keep a storage unit. And I do. And I probably always will. But I look at that as rent. So, there you have it, peeps. The backstory as to how and why I'm living in a converter horse trailer. So, it hurt to get that off my chest and, or to explain or to share. But by the same token... It's done. And now you know. I thank you for listening. I so appreciate each and every single one of you. While you're here, please thumbs up, comment on, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And while you're subscribing to my YouTube channel, please don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you'll receive future video uploads. And until next time, may Christ bless each and every one of you most abundantly.